Hey, Tim Ryan here. So I got struck with a typical issue of CDU Sparks where you do really want some audio out of it, uh, but nothing really works. So um, 21 tricks right behind me, that's my thing. It actually did come with a BRP, that floating speaker thing. All nice and good, apart from two things. One, it tried to kill me about three times when it was jumping out of the seat, and I know BRP released uh, some form of revision that secures it in place. All nice and good. Slightly different problem. Mine is outside the warranty, and the speaker decided to die. And they are non-repairable speakers because they are hot welded together. You can't get inside them. I will. I promise you, I will butcher it to pieces and fix it. Uh, but I decided to go for a slightly different solution. So, why are we making that video? Well, as every other DIY guy out there, I jumped online to see if anyone done a video on how to install stereo in these things. Yep, found two. Both of them proven to be quite useless because in one of them the guy is like, oh yeah, you put it here, and then quickly found out that the amp is gonna hit the fuel tank, and then he doesn't show you where he's hidden. Fine. Um, second video, the guy installs it inside the tunnel, so somewhere in the under the seat area. Not a fan of that, because the engine is right there and these things get bloody hot. Electronics, hot engine, probably not something that I want to mix. So, decided to do my own video and I will put a Amazon, some, some form of list under this video in the comments or somewhere, I don't know, don't ask, um, where I'll list everything that I bought, everything that is going to go on. So, quick disclaimer, you're doing it at your own risk. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. Um, is it going to leak? Mm, shouldn't. If you use enough um, sealant, nothing, won't, nothing will leak, that's fine. Um, is it a smart idea to butcher a ski? Probably not. Not going to stop me anyway, I'm still going to do it. Um, don't worry, you may fail somewhere. All of the fails are usually easily fixable. I'll try to provide as much info so you don't fail. If you fail, don't worry about it. Your mom still loves you and she still thinks you're a handsome young gentleman, so life is still good. You still have a ski to play with. So yeah, upwards, onwards. Um, we're gonna start this video backwards. I'll show you the final result first so you know what you're signing up for, what it sounds like. Then we're gonna have a little breakdown of the tools and components that we're using. And then I'll show you where the amp mounts and how I run the wiring. The reason why I say I, a lot of people probably will disagree with me and say that it's a stupid idea. Fine, let's let it be. That's cool. It's just my own way and it seems to work quite a treat so far. Uh, special thanks to Craig um, who gave me that idea. And yeah, let's go and we'll see what it sounds like. Sweet. So one of the stupidest things you can do is try to record how things sound on the video through the YouTube and then watch it on your phone because, yeah, that's just not going to give you an idea. But we're going to try a semi-scientific method. If you remember the Jurassic Park, you felt the dinosaur step because there was a glass there that was showing you vibration. So we're going to try to do the same thing. Here's my other woman. Uh, she's RXT 300 um, with a factory stereo, which is quite good. It's not too bad. And I'll show you literally side by side on the same track. Uh, that's a copyright free music, not what I usually listen to. My jazz is more ACDC slash Montley Crew, a little bit more on the rock style side of things, but welcome to YouTube, copyright issues. So um, we're gonna start with RXT, I think. Let's connect to the RXT. God, I hate Android. Go on, mate, work. So we are going with BRP remote. Connect. Cool. So theoretically, we are connected to RXT. Volume. Yeah, that's that's maxed out. Little vibrations, but yeah, you get the idea. Like, overall, that stereo is not too bad. When you're sitting right up front, it's sort of in your face, in your ears, and it's all nice and good. Um, but honestly, it's just nowhere near what this little thing does. Connected. Bluetooth connected. 
I must say the connectivity is a lot easier than um, anything BRP does. Ah, check this out. <laughs> Again, you listen it on video in a very random way, but to give you an idea, this is like sitting on a sub box. It's amazing. Um, special shout out to my special person by the name Mud for this amazing glass that works at Treat. So yeah, here we are. This is what it sounds like. If you're happy with how this sounds like, let's move on and start dissecting things. Okay, before you start the journey of making this go doof doof, um, I'll give you a quick rundown on the tools you will need. Most of the DIY guys will have all of this jazz floating around the garage. Um, but I thought I'll give you a rundown of what I'm using. Again, most of it you don't actually need, but the most basic things that you do want. Um, so we're gonna cut the speakers in. You will need a whole saw kit. This is the cheapest one I've managed to find. There was like 11 or 12 bucks or something. And only because I needed this specific one, five inch slash 127 millimeter. I'm five inch of freedom units, if you guys from States looking. Um, ideally, you actually, for this particular speaker set, you want 130, but couldn't find anything that was cheap. So this had to do, had to sort of um, apply a little bit of a file to it in a few places, nothing too scary. Then you need to secure the speakers in place. I'm going with a uh, marine adhesive sealant, 291 Sikaflex. This is actually polyurethane. So polyurethane is something that your windscreen is fixed with. It's generally speaking a bit of a glue, a bit of um, flexible bond. Doesn't really dry out completely, so allows a bit of a play. And as we know, this is why the bridges flex a little bit, because if you make them too sturdy, they'll just crack. So in our case, we want a little bit of a flexible glue to it. Um, this is just my handheld gun uh, that I use for fixing, screwing things together. It's basically like a motorized screwdriver. Great piece of kit. Now, you will need a proper drill, aka this, or even a small attachment on this. Uh, two reasons for it. A, hole saw that you need, because that's exactly how you're going to cut in the speakers. Uh, second thing, I recommend getting like a 2 mil um, drill bit. Don't ask me what it is in freedom units. All you really want, you want something smaller than the screws you are using. So these are the screws that I was using in a couple of places. And for comparison, that all you want is a little pilot hole so you don't struggle too much. Okay, that's done, moving on. Uh, basic toolkit, all I have in this one, a um, couple of torque speeds, 10 mil, whatnot, to take the deck apart. Etc. Nothing special. Uh, I use a lot of cable ties everywhere just to secure things. Again, personal preference. You don't really need them. Uh, hitch ring. Again, not something that you need. I love soldering everything together because they will get nice solid connection. So it's a little chippy gas torch basically. Um, and this is the kit for the wire stripping and everything. So again, if you don't want to solder, you can just resolve to using these things that you can creep crimp wise together. Not my favorite way of doing it, but sure, why not? So overall, this was like less than 10 bucks. Uh, buff, I actually don't remember. This is leftovers that I had sitting around. Can't be more than 10 bucks really. Um, invest in one of these if you're doing quite a bit of wiring. These are lovely, these are about 20 bucks. Roughly 25 you can pick these up for. And um, cable ties, I don't know, 30 cents, something next to nothing, basically. Ah, forgot to mention a little thing called um, lithium grease. You will see a little bit further. Sorry, not lithium, dielectric grease. Um, this is to insulate the connectors so no salt water gets anywhere. And of course, of course, the amp. So in our case, we're using something that made out of majestical material called Chinesium. Uh, manufactured by Velix, no idea who they are. Um, why are we going with it? Because it was cheap. It was like well and truly cheap. I'll put a link on Amazon where I got this thing. Uh, Power 300, I call bullshit on that. I really don't think it's 300. Um, if this does 100 RMS, happy with that. Speakers, this is what we're going with. KM65 is what I've got. A bit of an overkill, but meh. Sounds good, don't care. 
So that's it. All up, all of this is a, a lot cheaper than even buying the basic stereo kit for the tricks that clips to the front. Don't like those. Ah, cool. Here is two little things that I quite like. Vacuum cleaner, because when you drill the hulls, they actually make a hell of a lot of mess. And I like to have a little vacuum cleaner just to suck it all up. And well, if all of this fails, burn it, claim insurance, pretend you've never seen it. Job done. Now you actually don't need that. that that's just sitting there. So cool. All right, gonna, what we're gonna do, we're gonna lift the deck and I'll show you where everything goes. Okay, this is where the speakers are. So kickers, come as six and a half and they'll give you two covers one is white one is silver didn't like either so I spray painted the bloody thing the only paint I had here just floating around the workshop was the brake caliper paint yay orange <laughs> all nice and good until I went to bake it in the oven and set the temp a bit too high so this one got warped a little bit now the reason why I'm showing you this area it will be a little bit confusing in terms of where and how to mount it I chose to mount them here mainly because it's a bit of a directional hit to the, to the rider. I know a lot of people mount them in the storage bins here, sound sort of goes here, you can probably mount it here, sound goes here or here and so on and so forth. Yeah, not my thing, I decided to go here. So um, basically before you cut a hole, what I recommend you do, you grab the spare cover put it in place and it will give you a rough indication where your speaker will sit then sort of draw out a center through this little hole here and in that center drill a little pilot pilot hole with a either two mil or one mil drill bit and then attack it with decent sized hole so i think it was 127 or 130 mil something like that. sorry no idea in freedom units probably about five inches or so plus on that one then what you're going to do, once you made a big hole in your hull, and this is going to be very funny and very scary and make a lot of mess, so hence having vacuum cleaner next to you is a good idea. Then you're going to put the speaker up, and you're going to drill little pilot holes for your screws. Because I can tell you one thing, trying to pierce these hulls with self-tapping screws is the stuff that nightmares are made out of. Just no. Make yourself a little pilot hole, for each one of them is going to make your life a lot easier. Uh, another thing I did do, and I actually forgot to take a video of it, on the back of these speakers there will be like a little foam running around, which is supposed to be the ceiling foam. I removed all of that and filled everything behind it, like the actual backing of the speaker, I filled it with polyurethane. That way I get direct seal and nothing gets in my way. Um, so far so good. But yeah, you can see that this one is quite warped because the idiot here decided to bake them at a lot higher temp that they should have been baked on. Well, probably dumb idea to bake plastics anyway and dumb idea to use brake caliper paint on plastics. Yeah, told you, Mama raised the champion. Um, apart from that, all pretty straightforward. You will see the wiring on the back of these things in a minute and where the amp went. Right, so this part is pretty self-explanatory. We got the kickers sitting right in here. I did have to trim the foam a little bit on both sides, like this, then run a butane torch to sort of seal it up a little bit. Now, the reason for placing it here, I've seen a few videos where guys put them inside the tunnel somewhere deep in there. I don't really want to put it right above the engine because temperature and electronics is not a great combo. Second thing, when the ski is upside down and there is any water in the hull, guess which point is going to fill up the quickest right there it's gonna fill up so what we got here m sits on a bit of an angle forward that's the highest point i can get so far um three self tappers pre-drilled holes with two mil bit uh amp i know it all looks like shit, but it's all about function here this is polyurethane so it's a bit of a glue a bit of a sealant um sealed every niche entry point into the amp just in case we do end up severely underwater which should still be okay uh wiring so these speakers will have two sets coming out of them one is the signal one is leds by the way kicker if you guys are watching screw you for not following the color pattern basically you need to put 12 volt onto the black one and if you want red color red becomes your negative because that totally makes sense guys absolutely anyway so wiring runs through here these little things um they're like cable tie holders absolute lifesavers because you can have the wiring it's in here nicely um so story is one speaker second speaker 
then you sort of marry them into the harness. Uh, this is for my remote control. Currently it's sitting like this, just so I can draft everything up, make sure I'm happy. Uh, next step, I'm enclosing all of the wiring in this little conduit here. So it's gonna look a little bit tidier. Uh, so inside we are going follow follow the white dots, basically. We got these and this is where it's gonna run. Runs underneath, hugs, then goes on that panel and it's gonna sit over there. So this is where my wiring is running there. Uh, the whole idea, everything will be on one quick disconnect plug. Uh, so you're only adding one plug to it and we should be golden. Um, yeah, pretty sure I covered everything from this side. So I'm just gonna tidy it all up a little bit and then bring this key from the fan, it's actually my fan. Um, and yeah, show you what's happening up top and then we're gonna fire it up. So bench test before I slap it all together. Um, speakers are in, the underside is done with cables, shielded and everything. Cool, so this is how it's going to work. We have independent switch, just in case this bitch decides to draw the battery. We're not gonna have that problem now. We'll see, this is the joy of mock-ups, things are falling apart. But long story short, I'll flick it on for a second. Once you flick the switch, system is active. So speakers light up. I also put inline LED in here, so that tells me if I left the trigger on, and the trigger lights up itself as well. So three visual warnings, if I missed all of them, well, I deserve a flat battery then. And obviously the controller, once it's all on, controller lights up as well, and we're good to go. So everything works, now we're going to tidy up the wiring, slam it all in, bolt it up. So I'm about to slam the deck back on the ski, I forgot one little part. So this connector here, being quite exposed, there will be water getting in one way or another. Now, water, electricity, wiring is one combo that results in oxidization and shorting shit out. So what we're gonna do is spray a bit of contact oil and cover it all with dielectric grease. I recommend doing it on just about every image connector you can find on this thing, not just an amplifier, but on this poor thing as well. So we're gonna do that and slam the deck back on top. Also, just in case you were wondering how we're gonna connect everything to the main power supply. There it is, this is the harness I'm making. So on this end, you have two ring terminals, which is basically this bullshit. The only difference is I stripped this part and I've soldered the actual wires um, to the crimp. So they're crimped and soldered, so that's not coming apart anytime soon. Now, um, this is nothing more than just a shield and decoration that is split into once it comes to the battery. And this is just double waterproof terminal with positive and negative. Um, show you the other end in a minute. Cool, just before we throw the deck back on, um, this is what we got. Negative, positive, up, 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 slightly to the side. So that's the whole idea. I want to reach in through the service thing, whatever it's called. Um, unplug all three, lift the deck off, nothing else to unplug. Um, C-Tech charger, so the order I do these in, you get the main engine ground, then we have an amp, and then we have the C-Tech charger blinky thingy. <laughs> Works great, by the way. Um, yeah, don't give me shit for how horrible this thing looks, I'm well aware of it, I bought it when I had 40 hours of it and hasn't been washed once. Yay. Cool, so theoretically, Everything should be plugged in now. There you go. So connector goes from the battery side and plugs into the waterproof connector. Obviously, we sit it on a bit of an angle, so I'll fix this a bit later. This is gonna go up to the switch, and this is going to the amplifier. Flick a button. Speakers light up, LED on. This thing is on as well. Cool, so we should be up and running. Flick the Bluetooth. Turn it on, VX508, that's us. Bluetooth connected. There you go. So let's see if this works. And it works quite nicely. So that's it. Congrats, you're done. You have a ski with amazing speakers and it's bloody loud. Have fun, guys.